Hum, ba -dum, ba -dum. When we last met, our heroes had finally escaped from Rose Book. After defeating Admiral Dark... No, not him. After defeating Father Tinder and dodging the city guards, the gang piled into Dignity's horse, and they charged the police blockade, breaking out of the town. Freed but without direction, our heroes came across a small hill in a swamp. A hill with a window! Peering into the window, Quark spied a showering lady and frightened her. But after a terrible excuse, the gang entered her home. They shared some awkward conversation before leaving. But when they left, they encountered a crippled fire elemental. And although they started in anger and rage, they came to an understanding and left the fire elemental alone. But not before Quark burned his dick off in an ill-fated sexual assault. But where would the gang go? What would they do? How would they get to the Air City? Did they even care about getting there? Find out next on an all-new Harmon <laughs> All right, so you guys, you guys are you're on the main road heading out of Rose Book. This path, this main road is winding its way, meandering through the rolling grassy hills of the landscape, gently to the northeast. This is the path uh, Sharpie decided to go down after he, uh, you guys said that you couldn't go farther into the swamp, and then you left the lady, and you didn't want to go back to town, so you're just like, I'm going down this road. Yeah, that's where you are. I've been pushing the li I've been testing the limits of like can you actually just make Spencer And what'd you learn? Well, I, the, the, you can't. The, the, <laughs> well, I know I can, but I'll regret it, right? Like, I don't know. I will regret it. If I if I if I couldn't, you'd be you know uh it would be because you were a tyrant. You're not a tyrant. Thank you're, you. You're a benevolent, impersonal cosmic force. That's you why I do this. You will allow me to walk west in one direction forever. I will encounter cacti and swamps. That's what's there. That's what's to the west. But if I really want to enjoy myself, I, I gotta go back to your narrative. Well, that's not even necessarily true. You just have to create your own narrative. I will. All right. So, so are we still close to the town? Can we see the town from where we are? Yeah, we... it's pretty far off in the distance, but you can still see it. Uh, you know, it's one of the only landmarks in this kind of the town hilly we left, area. With the, the, the uh... town, yeah, I'm curious. Can we tell whether Darkstar has gotten through the shield protecting the town and whether the town is being totally destroyed? Um, Darkstar was actually chasing you guys down, but then he saw something happening over at the town and then he left. There was the skeletons climbing the forest field and then they disappeared in a flash. Yeah. Uh, that that upset Darkstar. You think it might have had something to do with that necromancer frost giant, but he's miles away. Boy, that dot I'm not connecting. The necromancer frost giant. Yeah, I know. The plot, it just happens whether or not anyone pays attention, you know? <laughs> Wait, but what... Are we, are we still no, in the company? I, what I'm saying to you is I don't, I don't recall. Obviously, it's not a big surprise that I'm always drunk when we're playing. I don't recall any actual overt connections between the necromancer frost giant and that stuff. Yeah, that would be me, a narrator, explaining things that you, the characters, would have no knowledge of. So, no, I didn't say anything oh, about Oh, you didn't, that. but you just did now. Mm-hmm. Right, okay. So I, I thought Darkstar was going in, was still going into the city. He nah, was he was chasing you guys, saw the thing, took off. Okay. Gentlemen, I think that we should head to the Air City. Seems like the right idea. Coco is pointed in this direction, and like I always say, horses know best, we know the rest. You do always say that. Those skeletons back at the city, they remind me of that frost giant. <laughs> Thank you for sharing your feelings of association. Let's go to the air city. They remind you of the frost giant. Go the on. shards of power, the frost giant wanted them. Admiral Sarsgaard. <laughs> so we gave so you got killed by the frost giant necromancer yeah. and then we gave him the shard we in order the, to get the we army. We gave him the shards. We get we keep giving shards away. And Father I, Tender also had a shard? He did, but uh it might have vanished in in the scuffle. Guy's always looking for shards, he's looking to accrue shards. Got a got a feeling that Admiral Darkstar getting all those shards ain't best for anybody. I I pull Sharpie aside. Yes. Sir, um is something going on with you beneath the surface? You seem to be questioning everything we're doing, and I am not well-versed in the way of emotions or feelings, but it seems that this is 
pertinent. Sometimes I feel like someone's controlling me that may or may not be an alcoholic. <laughs> and so I have blackouts where I, I am motivated by different things. Sometimes I, I c- come become conscious <laughs> and I'm halfway down a road that I ran down out of defiance of nothing. <laughs> then I'm a little more sober. I don't know. I'm, I'm going to ask you the question I ask myself every morning in a puddle. What do you want out of this day? I don't want the world to be destroyed by Admiral Darkstar. I, I say, hey, what are you guys talking about over there? <laughs> <laughs> what are our obligations? I mean, what are we doing if we're not if we're not saving the world? If Admiral Darkstar is gonna like accrue power and become a more powerful admiral with darker stars? <laughs> <laughs> So, so it seems like a great idea, long term, for us to take out Dark Star. We've been fighting him for two years now. I have to ask the question, dignity. Like, this is your town, and it's being swarmed over by skeletons. Mm, you know me better than I know me. <laughs> <laughs> so, should we not, while we're here, go kick the asses of the things that are trying to destroy your I town? I think that is an excellent idea. That's that a is, great that idea. That is a great idea. Let's. All right, Sharpie, let's do it. Okay. Let's fight. All right, and I promise, no matter what happens from now on, I'm really going to understand what we're doing and why we're doing it. I, no I lift I lift Quark up from between his legs, which now is nothing, and put him on my shoulder like a my like dick a wishbone. Really burns where my dick used to be really burns. Be careful. I'm, I just want to carry you, little one. All right. So you ride back towards the town and you can't help but notice a conspicuous lack of skeletons as if they'd all disappeared. Uh, you get closer to the town and closer still and you, you see, you see, um, small piles of ash. Not, not skeleton sized, but just small piles of ash. And that seems to be the only sign that any, any creatures or anything have been around the town. Mm. Obviously it's still protected by the town. Is it barrier. like in the Batman movie where the people are dehydrated? Nah, nah. Okay. You mean, you, do you, do you, are these piles of ash outside the town? Yeah, you haven't entered the town physically as of yet. But they're not. You say they're not skeleton sized. The piles of ash, like no. You, you, what you're saying is we don't think that these piles of ash are were that skeletons. The skeletons were disintegrated. So do we hear screaming and mayhem and no and the sound of combat? Or it's, it's all calm? peace. You don't see any skeletons. Just this ash business and the the dome protecting Rose Book from all evil. Does we did it, guys. We did it. <laughs> well, I so as we were leaving, I looked over. Our, I, I saw the skeletons disappear. I think it was like a, I don't know. It's, and, and, and that angel, the Yoshi angel, dark star figure is gone too. Yeah, he took off after he saw the skeletons disappear. And are disappear. we able to enter the city? Uh, yeah, if you want. But you did like escape from police. Oh, yeah. Let's get the fuck out of here. There's no one to fight. Let's go. All right. Okay. Well, it's it's important to have these moments. <laughs> can I quickly before we go? Can I can I examine the piles of ash and see if there's anything to that? Yeah, you examine the piles of ash, and they seem they seem not to be ash at all, but actually really finely crushed up uh, onyx dust. That's a gemstone associated with necromancy as well as uh, teleportation <laughs> magic. Interesting. I wonder who could have sent uh, legions of skeletons. Uh, well, uh, well the guess. frost giant. I mean, I already had a feeling that he was involved. <laughs> <laughs> All right, gentlemen. You think these you think these dust piles are deposits that are the result, the residual result of teleportation magic on the part of a necromancing frost giant? Or just dumped? He's done using them. They're no longer valuable. Maybe he got, he was able to get the shard. Oh. <laughs> I, I thought I thought that Darkstar was commanding the skeletons. It sounds like you know either Darkstar and this guy are working together. The necromancer. They didn't seem to be aligned in the past. Why are <laughs> you just looking at me? That's making a face I've never Why am I seen looking before. At the guy the, the story? face that people are looking at me like I'm supposed to do something. I don't think there's any way that the Frost Giant is in league with Darkstar. I mean, these are too big. You can't have a solar system with two suns. Not that I know what a solar system is, but I mean, like they're both giant assholes that'll do nothing. Uh, they'll stop at nothing to get uh, fucking dumbass shards. Uh, I've run across both of them. I think that I don't think they would work together. I start gathering up the onyx dust and I put it in my backpack. You do that. You gather up several dusts. 
All right, we got to figure out so what to do. I, I, okay, so the skeletons showed up. The skeletons assailed the city. It's like, and I, I remember Darkstar going like, <laughs> and then getting mad and leaving. It's like the skeletons showed up. The skeletons represent the frost giant. They showed up. Then they disappeared. Then Admiral Darkstar disappeared. If we really wanted to get into the fray, I th- I reckon that means it's back at the uh, ice gi- ice frost giant's uh, city. I, I don't know why we'd want to go there, but except to save the world, eventually. But it would have to be in a really unlikely way because we're not an army of skeletons or a giant or a, or a horrible, uh, powerful wizards. We're just a ragtag group of uh, occasional rapists and murderers. You know what lies within us? Uh, the souls of rapists and murderers? Skeletons. We are a small army of skeletons. Yeah! What? But we have more than bones. We have heart. We have lungs. <laughs> Just literally. A sense of nerves. adventure. Yeah, we, uh... <laughs> We've so, also leveled up skin. a lot since the last time we fought that guy, so... I have, but I always lose outside? track of my spells. Yeah, you're outside the city. Okay, I, I right. charge, I gallop with Coco into the city to just see what the uh, climate is. Um, there's uh, people, you know, just busy people living their lives. There's occasional guards standing around. They're noticing your horse and pointing right. at you and starting to yell and grab torches. Can I look through my blood book and approach for, for teleportation stuff? Knowing yep. that I have okay. I dust? I use I use diplomacy and I approach the villager with the most interesting accent. All right. Uh, teleport. There's no teleporting in that blood book, I'm afraid. Okay. But Sco- scoops were wanted by the law in that town. Yeah, you find this guy with the accent. And he's like, "You ran me over with the horse when we were trying to find you because we I'm thought sorry, you were." I'm sorry, sir. I was looking for somebody else. You're going to have to stop. Get off that horse there. All right. I use diplomacy, and I say, uh, so sorry. Just uh, wanted to apologize again, and goodbye. I'm going to go. What's the opposite way that we're going? Uh, east at the moment. Oh, but I shouldn't lie. I just I, I kiss the air a million times, confusedly, <laughs> and I make a fart noise. And I say Fridays at six, and I just gallop out. <laughs> What's uh? I feel like that's like performance or something. You don't have any performance ranks. Really? Do you? you think that's a performance? I, I have performance. It's certainly not diplomacy. I'm Christa Berg. I have performance. I'll start playing the wire saw. A wire. You know, like, yeah. Playing the wire saw it makes her diplomacy seem a lot more so. <laughs> Thank you. You manage to get out of there. Okay. I consult my uh, my gem of audience talking to uh, because I'm wondering, am I missing something? Is, is, does someone in our party have the power to like mass teleport? No. We could just capacity? we can just go there. We could like rest up and head on our way. I have three scissors. <laughs> <laughs> do we need to cut something? <laughs> Why do you have three? I don't know. That's what's on this. That's so funny. You only need one. How did you end up with three scissors? All right. Well, I mean, yeah. And, and, and six combs. <laughs> oh, that was from because wa- Mark looted. Here. He looted a barber shop. Uh, okay. <laughs> it's all coming back. I remember to me. that. Well, okay, Spencer. Yeah. I'm I'm meta asking you this question. Yeah. <laughs> Our trail that brought us here, like w- back when we were at that frost giant city, yeah. How many uh, transplanar world, you know, jumps did we make, or is it a physical? Well, we- you took you took uh, what's it, you you took a Tylenol with codeine out from right. there, so it was like a unicorn jaunt. Do we know? My short question is: Do we know how to get back to that frost giant city? Not exactly. You know the general heading, but I mean, it's a mountain range that's you know well known. I mean, it's a long shot. We well, let's head to the mountain to... range. Well, then what do you uh, what do you want to do? Well, scoops. I'm, I'm I'm trying to what I'm trying to save the cocksucking world. What what was the deal with the Air City again? What was there? Oh, you know, just uh, robot baby memories. Right. Okay. <laughs> I mean, there's that but, too. It's like so, we could we could you know it's like it's, yeah, it's like, like a, there's tons of possibilities that no one's choosing. So why don't we go? Yeah, why make don't we, a choice. Let's let's make our way let's make our way towards the mountain range. Let's go towards the frost giants. 
it'll take us some time. We haven't slept in like literally 20 adventures. Like <laughs> let's camp for the night and let's start making it on the on the horse and on our way. That's my pitch because the baby upgrade is just selfish, chaotic, evil kind of garbage. Like we're like, hey, life's a video game, and the. But on the other hand, the going back to the Frost Giants city is like kind of almost futile, like naive. Uh, maybe we could help be good. You sound like a guy just stuck in his apartment for a year when he moves to L.A. and he's like, ah, I should write a screenplay, but movies are so bad now and I don't want to follow the man. Let's just go. First of all, what's a screenplay? Second of all, nice. you saw, what's a scoops? <laughs> I, as Dignity Sarah's guard, my, my sense of righteousness, um, over, uh, outweighs my sense of loyalty to this group, which is still great. And I start, I, I pack, I, I make motions to move towards the range where I know the Frost Giant is. I'm with you. Thank I'm you. Th- Jump on, Krista Berg. And on the way, I, I, I tell want me in what's on this. going on. I want in on this. I also have four knives. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Quirk. Knives. Right. We're, we're safe. I got four knives. I'm coming too. It's my idea. Of course. <laughs> you shamed me for it. I, I have no sense of shaming. I just uh, the only meaning for shame I know is celebration, prayer, praying God, praising God. L'chaim. So we ride and then we camp. Yes. Okay. This is the good part. And at the campfire. Guys, let's talk. (laughs) (sighs) I think I'm going to turn in. My dad, wait, please stay up. (laughs) My dad used to beat me so hard. Guys, I know a great song we can sing by the campfire. (laughs) Do you? I whittle a alligator. I comb Sharpie's hair. Though, yeah, that What happened. you whittling, Sharpie? <laughs> it's an alligator. It's a, it's the shape of an alligator, but it doubles as a clothespin. The oh. alligator's mouth uh, is like a clothespin thing. That's clever. It's cool. It's cool. We can use this to hang clothes. <laughs> <laughs> or just pin them. I, uh, I repeat an elvish chant to myself, telling myself to be strong. The subtitles say Grace Grace from the rivers of the Father Tombstones run deep through the dank Arrows of flint be flinty Ears are pointy Hearts are deep Dank, dark dungeons Deep Sky River Horse Bow, wow, wow. River. Shit. Tree. Uh, amen. Sunset. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> all right, and then we wake up. Uh, thank God no spiders attacked us. And your hair looks great. <laughs> I even cut some of those split ends with one of my three scissors. <laughs> Then we keep traveling. Okay. <laughs> oh. Yeah. I thought the campfire was going to be some sort of... No way, know. man. Yeah. You keep traveling and you come across a small, colorful, <laughs> topped, uh, uh, tent-topped stand. You see a small boy, perhaps 13 years of age, sitting inside this tent holding a hand-painted sign that says, Wilderness Guide, 20 gold pieces. Yes. Oh, yeah. That's a little That's high. Steep. Yeah. <laughs> Inflation. Hey, you, man. You could I'm get like 600,000 feet of rope for that. You could. Or you could hire a great guide to the wilderness. I'm Lil Baskins, and I'm a wilderness guide. Say there, boy. Boy. What know you of the ice giant city? Oh, I know all about all the wilderness. That's why I guide people through it. You there, boy. How much for a tour there? Well, I have this the sign. Big one. I'm holding this sign right so you could read it. <laughs> if Flint were salt, you'd have a supper load. Man, I don't get your jive speech. Here's what you will get. 
Ten sovereigns, not a penny more. Uh, sovereigns aren't accepted in the realm here. They're gold. Uh, well, I asked for 20. It's on the sign, clearly marked. <laughs> you look to deserve 40. I, I look I to hand deserve you. 40. 40. What, what the, boy, that, boy, what, boy. I say, I say how boy. How you haggle? I, 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 I say boy. Will you trade for yarn? <laughs> I have yarn in my backpack. I'll, I'll give you two copper for some yarn, man. If you want yarn, I mean, if you have yarn, she I want it. She just gave him 40 gold. Yeah, I got <laughs> spending copper. All right, okay. We better get the platinum tour. Oh, well, I mean, you're getting guided, not toured. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Jesus Christ. Well... The... Are you giving what, us a what, tour what of is your name? What is your name, young man? I'm oh, Lil Baskins. 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 Will Baskins? Lil Baskins. Yeah. Lil Baskins. I was born in a Baskin. Uh, wow. Boy, I hope you're prepared to go on the adventure of your life. <laughs> I hope you're prepared to keep paying me. Be, beyond sure. the double price that we paid you? That's the Baskins guarantee. <laughs> That we have to keep paying you? That's the Baskin's guarantee. <laughs> but boy, how often do we pay you on this? You know, upon completion of the mission. We'll feel it out. Yeah, all no, right, we, boy. We, 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 we're going to the Frost Giant City. We oh. gave you 40 gold. Yeah, yeah. We're going. We're not giving you any more anything ever. Well, Don't we already know we'll where the talk. Frost Giant City is? We'll talk. Not exactly. Oh, God, okay. I feel like I'm at the Cable Car Museum. <laughs> How long will it take to get there, Little Baskins? Several days, at least. Little Baskins. <laughs> <laughs> what, what of your parentage? Oh, I was born in a Baskin. Is there a Mrs. Little Baskins? No, I'm a child. Okay. <laughs> it's very... I don't know. <laughs> we have Little a robot baby. Thirteen. L- Lil Baskins, l- let's start this journey post haste. <laughs> All right. Let uh, me just l- real quick, l- were you guys listening to Great Expectations on tape before l- we l- arrived? Baskins. What is when you happening? address a little Why boy in so Dungeons and Dragons, you take on a haughty tone. <laughs> you there, Shar- boy. Sharpie, I, uh, Sharpie, will you pay this boy? <laughs> I, 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 I've paid him and then some. Well, let's go. Uh, right. You there, Little Baskins, lead the way. And let me just pack up my uh, tent here, and we'll be okay. Let's go. And you set off towards the mountains that I mentioned. That's all, man. We got so much fucking time that we've spent. Oh, he's ca- he's just pulling I'm the just plug. I'm just pulling him. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Okay. That's it. Cliffhanger. Dungeons and Dragons.